Let us pray. O God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So we had a lot of names because we are blessing the Bibles that we also handed out last year. So hence, not just doing a nursery and um, three-year-olds three and third grade, but also four-year-olds and fourth graders. So students, I would like you to be holding your Bible right now, and we are going to have a prayer. So I'd like you to hold it. You can hold it up. You can hold it open. You can hold it closed. Hold it up. And we are going to do a repeat prayer. Um, feel free to repeat after me, anyone who would like to participate. So we're going to pray to God to ask a blessing on our Bible. So is everyone touching their Bible? All right, here we go. Let us pray. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for your word. For your word. Help, us Help us as we use, as we use these, Bibles these Bibles to learn, to, learn, to ask questions, to celebrate all people. Help us to know how much you love us. And we love you too. Be with us today and every day. And all God's children said, Amen. Psalm 54. Please respond with the bold print. Save me, O God, by your name. In your mind, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Behold, God is my helper. Render evil to those who spy on me. I will offer you a free will sacrifice. And praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble. And my eyes look down on my For our children's sermon for this rally day service, I am joining you from Trinity's Nursery. I wanted to talk to you about welcome. So our gospel reading talks about Jesus welcoming the children. And welcome is something that is very important. Have you ever had a time where someone has welcomed you? So I want you to take a moment and see if you can think of a time when someone has welcomed you. Go ahead. I'll wait. I would like to show you a few representations of when people have welcomed me. The first one is a sign that was in my office on, I believe, my first Sunday here at Trinity. And it says, Welcome Pastor Jeanette. And there was a sign, I think there was a plant and some candy, and it was a way of making me feel welcome to a new space, a new office, a new job. And it was uh, a joy to read those words. And not only does it say welcome, but it says Pastor Jeanette. It represents and, and names the role, the relationship I have with my faith community. Now the other representation of a sign of welcome is this. Can you tell what this is? It's toilet paper. So when I first became a pastor and I moved four and a half hours away up around the Alexandria area, in my first call, in my first, what would be my first sort of parsonage, a little cabin on the lake, it uh, had, when I walked in, a pile of things for me, including gift cards and pantry goods and paper products and toilet paper because they knew I probably didn't know where the grocery store was yet. And they wanted me to feel welcome and at ease. 
Now, how about you? And the opportunities that people have welcomed you. Maybe it's something someone said, or something someone did, or someone just willing to be around. These are important. And in our gospel reading, Jesus welcomes the children. Because in those times, children weren't seen as valuable. That Greek word that for child in this reading can also be interpreted as, as slave or low servant. And so Jesus, in lifting up the children, is saying everybody matters. That everyone has God's love. That everyone deserves a welcome. And that everyone needs to be welcomed. Now that memory you might have of someone welcoming you, you have an opportunity to share that type of emotion and care with others. And you can do it in Jesus' name because that's what God called us to do, to welcome the children and to welcome anyone else who needs Christ's welcome. Let's join in a word of prayer, a repeat, pit, a repeat prayer. Please repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for all the times we have been welcomed. Help us to open our eyes and see places where others need to be welcomed. May we be generous and welcome people each and every day through our words, our actions, and our deeds. And all God's children said, Amen. The gospel for this morning comes from the gospel of Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then they went on from there and passed through Galilee. But Jesus did not want anyone to know it. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. When they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? And they were silent, for they were on the way. They had argued who amongst one another was the greatest. And Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ.
Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like to share with you something I encountered on one of my pastor forums this week. Oftentimes we talk about church things, and it's a kind of a chance of sharing. And someone by the name of C.J. Bale shared rules for children in worship. And I'd like to share them with you. Rule one, if you find that you're sitting in front of a child and they can't see, lean to the side. Rule two, if the children behind you are rustling papers, then hand them a crayon. Rule three, if there is a baby crying, offer to take the baby from their parent and walk to the back of the church and rock the child for a while. The parent really needs a break. Rule four, if the teenagers are whispering, give them some Smarties. The rustling and crinkling will replace any whispering. Rule five, if an adult complains to an usher about noisy children near them, offer to trade seats with that adult and then apologize to the parents of the children. Rule six, when a child is running around giving everyone high fives during the passing of the peace, Greeting your neighbor, make sure to give that child an extra fun high five, and then be sure to do it for all the adults around you as well. Rule seven, if the child has worn tap shoes to church and is dancing on the wooden portion of the floor, slip sheet music for the entertainer to the pianist and roll with it. <laughs> Rule eight, when the children can't hear because an adult around them has worn their puppy jacket and has not taken it off and it keeps squeaking and distracting the children, offer to help them take off their puppy jacket and hang it up where it's supposed to go. Rule nine, when the three-year-old insists on standing in the front pew, turn backwards, looking at all the rest of the people, give the pair, give the child a pair of very dark glasses. That will prevent the child from catching an adult's eye, which would lead to distracting them. This will protect the adults who we know have very short attention spans and are easily distracted. Rule 10. When a child in front of you is very squirmy and then they finally turn around and you realize suddenly, oh, it's Jesus, take it in stride and play got your nose until he turns around again. These rules made us and my pastor colleagues smile and laugh as we shared them in a text study. They celebrate and lift up the joy of young people among us. But they perhaps turn on its head what we might initially want to do. This is not the reality in many congregations in worship, and it was not the reality in Jesus' time. Children were not seen as treasure. The value and worth came when you were an adult. For Christ to say these things, to say whoever welcomes a child in my name welcomes me, is no small thing, especially during those times. It's like taking the janitor of an office building and making them the CEO, taking the grocery store clerk and making him or her the face of the company. Jesus is disrupting the pecking order, and it's unsettling. See, the disciples hoped for a Messiah, but they wanted a very particular type of Messiah. One who would overturn the Romans and give them power, who would relieve the oppression of the Jewish people and bring God's kingdom the way they thought it should go into fruition. But Jesus is bringing a kingdom different than they can imagine. So the disciples are bickering about who's gonna be the wingman in the cabinet of God's power, who is at the right hand, when Jesus shares what Jesus has come to do, to give of himself in order that the forgotten can be remembered, to raise his voice and speak concerns and cares for those who cannot bring themselves to utter them, to create a place at the heavenly table for those who from others wouldn't even warrant an invitation. As I hear these words, they mean for me that those who don't have a church home are beloved by God and their spiritual journey should matter. When I hear these words for me, it means that the list of people who I really probably wouldn't want to have supper with are the people who will be sitting next to me at the heavenly feast, right where God placed them. When I hear these words for me, it means that when I feel my concerns are important 
and should be heard, there are others who feel the same way, but don't know how to articulate it, and my cause is to help them do so. The life of discipleship is not meant to be comfortable. If that were the case, we may be following our own set of rules, rather than the ones that God gives. Instead, it's an opportunity to lean to the side or step to the side and allow Jesus' welcome to come. We have a chance to see a welcome that will last longer and mean more and do more than we can ever imagine. Now, I know the last 18 months has been a challenge, and that's probably putting it mildly. No class I have ever had at seminary has prepared us for times like this or any sort of book for congregational councils or whatever occupation or wherever you spend your time. And I've been challenged to take a hard look at the way we might normally do things. And something that came to mind as I read this scripture was how we've done communion in the last 18 months. In order to ensure that communion would be distributed to those who have the need, we've consecrated elements by the to-go pack by the box. We've invited people to join in worship and to take things home with them, the communion elements home, so that spouses could have communion together. That communion could be shared at St. Luke's services for whoever came, whether they're on our rolls or not. And if you recall our intern, Pastor Sarah, she took communion with her to seminary, knowing that she may not be in an in-person service for some time. She took some for her roommate as well. And so our connections and our welcome go further and further than we ever imagined. I'm humbled by the stories that come out when people share how communion has been in the last 18 months. But if I had done it the way I was originally taught at seminary, we would have lost all those opportunities. And I offer those examples to you because we are free to be disciples in changing times, in ways not seen, in ways not expected. And sometimes it can be disorienting. It's hard, it's not always to our liking, but it's an invitation to welcome as Jesus did to those who maybe thought there wasn't a welcome for them. So perhaps we need to be reminded that with Jesus, the rules are different. To trust where Jesus is leading and realize that maybe that squirmy person or that person looking for belonging, looking for a safe place to be, looking to see if we can hold whatever they are experiencing is showing up and giving us an opportunity to say welcome in the voice of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. At this time, I invite our Sunday school teachers forward to come to the mic, uh, say your name and uh, what group you are teaching, and then please remain up here as we have a prayer and blessing for you.
Now we do not yet have all of our teachers for this year. There'll be an announcement about that at the end of service. But we are going to start with an acclamation and then uh, give thanks for these teachers. Please respond with, we praise you, O God. We're going to say that phrase three times and then we'll say amen. For the marvels of your creation, we praise you, O God. For the opportunity to explore and study, we praise you, O God. For those who guide us, teachers and mentors, we praise you, O God. Teach us in your ways, guide us in your path, for you, the creator of all that is seen and unseen. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. At Trinity, we give thanks for these leaders, for these teachers willing to give of their time and energy to give to those around us. We give thanks for the gifts that God has placed in you and the gifts that you will draw forth from your students. Teachers of the 2021-2022 Sunday school year, are you willing to share the gifts of the Holy Spirit that have been placed in you by God as you teach and share the good news of Christ through Trinity Sunday School program? If so, please say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, are you willing to pray for and support these teachers in their endeavors, knowing that our support creates spaces for children to hear about the love and care of God? If so, please say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. May God, who gave you the will to do these things, guard your hearts and minds in accomplishing them. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We now have the prayers of the people. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us overcome our divisions, that we are encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy, God of creation, we pray for this hunting earth. Awaken us in the Awaken in us a new desire to care for this world and empower us to support agencies, organizations, and individual efforts to heal our environment. Lord, in your mercy. God of cooperation, we pray for nations to the, of the world embroiled in conflict and inspire leaders to listen to each other and work towards peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children who cannot find safety in their home or country. Lord, in your mercy, God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illness. Help them find appropriate care, bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. Lord, in your mercy, God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst. As they grow, strengthen their faith and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy, God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died and pray for all who grieve today, especially the family of Doug Nave. Shine your grace on all your saints. Lord, in your mercy, Receive these prayers of God and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but to the first of the evil, and the life of kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
On this day, we also give thanks for Sheila Hankey, who has served as our Christian Education Coordinator for almost a year. Due to family circumstances, Sheila Hankey is unable to continue in this role, and so we give thanks for her time with us and wish her well in her future endeavors. We are thankful she's willing to help volunteer in the time ahead and be around to help us in transition. But September 19th will be her final day as Christian Education Coordinator. Thank you, Sheila, for all your gifts, and we give thanks for the ways that you have helped us to grow. Thank you, Trinity Lutheran Church, the community of Blue Earth, and all those joining us at home for joining us on this Rally Day service. Just some announcements before the final blessing. First, we'd like to let you know, and you, perhaps you've already noticed that there's a bit of a delay between our posting on Facebook, online, and BevCom versus the Sunday when services were recorded. This is the nature of things since our summer schedule has ended, and it's what we can do with recording and editing and technology at Trinity at this time. So thank you for rolling with that and being in touch with us via newsletter, the church office, or online in order to stay up to date with news and announcements. We will do the best we can with that. Another announcement, thank you so much to all those who worked behind the scenes and for Sunday school teachers and volunteers to make Rally Day a success and to also launch us into fall. We are thankful for the generosity of people who support our faith community and all the ways that that allows ministries to happen even in this ongoing pandemic time. So thank you for your generosity, and we look forward to learning together in the season to come. Now I invite you to receive the blessing. God, go before you to lead you. God, go behind you to encourage you. God, go beneath you to lift you up. God, go above you to watch over you, and beside you to befriend you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's children said, Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Thank you.